Hello, um, I want to talk to you about graphing trig functions. They are, uh, we've been practicing it a lot, um, so just some review of what we've been practicing. We've been practicing graphing them of the form uh, y equals a sine bx and y equals a cos bx. And when we use that form, A is the amplitude, and B is um, something that limits the period. The higher B is, the more we compress the thing. Um, if B is 1, then the period is 2 pi. Uh, so the sine function has a period of 2 pi radians, but it's just y equals sine x. This is a graph of y equals sine x, and you can see one, like this just repeats, it goes on this way, it goes on this way, and it goes on forever like an accordion. However, um, if we look at one period, how do I graph that one period and find the actual points on it? So I've got to find, uh, really the, the, the best way is to, to find the important points on it, or to find you know, those zeros, this one, this one, and this one, and the maximum and the minimum. And all I need to do to do that is to divide it into fourths. So I divide my 2 pi into fourths. Well, 2 pi over 4 equals pi over 2. So 1 fourth is pi over, of 2 pi is pi over 2. A half of, of it is 2 pi over 2, or pi. Then 3 pi over 2, and then 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. So the best way to figure out your intervals is to take your period, divide by 4, and that gives you the first one, and then you just use multiples of the first one the rest of the way. And that's, you know, that's for sine x. For cosine x, the same intervals, but it starts here, goes down here, it's bottom here, it's back up here, comes back around here. And again, like sine x, it goes on forever, but again, we want to know just those values. And we can name any of those points now. What's the minimum? Oh, it's at pi negative 1. Uh, what's the maximum? Well, it's at 0, 1, or you can say it's a 2 pi 1. Um, and its zeros are at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to touch the tangent graph yet. The sine and cosine graphs have this, uh, you know, then they have the ability to be translated. So, today's lesson, we look at one. Where it's like, this is the sine graph, the blue graph here, but translated. So, and we've used h and k before. And what they do, well, k is the simpler one. So, k just moves the whole graph up two. So, my graph is going to be moved up two. That, that's simple. That's easy. And, and if, by moving it up two, instead of it going from negative one to one, Move it, move it up 1, 2, and it's going to go from 1 to 3. So its minimum is going to be at 1, and its maximum is going to be at 3, and its midline is going to be at 2. So k is the midline. Uh, when we studied cosine and sine before, uh, 0 is the midline for all of them because we didn't have k. But now we've got k, so k is the new midline, and our graphs are going to go through there like that. But then the shifting left and right is more complicated because it's changing all these numbers. And it would be nice if we were just shifting by pi over 2. But we're shifting by pi over 3. So that means, I mean, it's easy enough to find this number, the number that it starts at, because it's just 0 minus pi over 3. Well, that's easy. That's negative pi over 3. So my graph, my sine graph, is it starts at negative pi over 3, and then 0 goes into 2, so it would be like right here. That's negative pi over 3, 2. 
the two is from this. But then the next point, pi over two minus pi over three. Well, now I've got pi over two minus pi over three, I need a common denominator. So what I did in class was I, I, I did that. I was like, okay, I need, what's my common denominator gonna be? So I've got pi over two and pi over three. It's gonna be six, right? So I'll change all this to six just to make it more simple for me. So change this, this is three pi over six, this is 6 pi over 6, this is 9 pi over 6, and this is 12 pi over 6. And now, I can, it's easier for me to subtract pi over 3 from each of them. What am I really subtracting? I'm subtracting 2 pi over 6. This is negative 2 pi over 6. And then 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6 is going to be pi over 6, and then I can just, you know, I, I can just move, really moving pi over 2 over every time, but by moving pi over 2, I'm moving 3 pi over 6, so it's 4 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6. That's the graph. Now, lucky thing for you is that the problems aren't really asking you, you know, to come up with this totally exact, you know, exactly like I do. But if you want to know how I do it, that's how I do it. I mean, in other words, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is if you can draw it and you don't, like, you don't draw all these, you don't, you don't write all these onto the x-axis, you're still, you're still graphing the sine function. What I'm doing with fractions is just labeling it correctly on the x-axis. And that enables me to find all these points if I need to. I know, I know correctly where they are. Um, okay, so the next, the next one I want you to look at, or I want us to look at, is the tangent function. Or it's the next one on that, on that page, on page eight. Um,